breaking records here in Syracuse. Citrus TV reporter Gabrielle Caracciolo is live from City Hall to break down this year's mayoral campaign expenses. Plus, Franken is set to resign amid sexual conduct allegations. Find out what the U.S. Senator said earlier today in front of Congress during his closing remarks. And one of the worst fires in California history. Citrus TV weather anchor Jack Watson is in the studio to tell us how extreme winds are making it harder to contain this fire. Citrus TV News starts right now. This is Citrus TV News live at 6, your campus news leader. We begin tonight with breaking news. The House has passed a stopgap spending bill extending government funding until December 22nd and staving off a partial government shutdown. Good evening, I'm Connor White. And I'm Claudia Bellafato. The stopgap spending bill passed a vote of 235 to 193 through the short-term bill is through a long-term version faces a major political obstacles. President Trump says that a full government shutdown over spending could still happen. Campaign spending during this year's mayoral race is turning some heads. Citrus TV reporter Gabrielle Caracciolo is live from City Hall to tell us about how much money was spent on this year's Syracuse mayoral race. Gabrielle? Thanks, guys. Yes, this year's Syracuse mayoral race was the most expensive in city history. Candidates spent more than $1.3 million. And frontrunners Ben Walsh and Juanita Perez-Williams spent almost 90 um, spent almost nine hundred excuse me thousand dollars combined both Walsh and Perez Williams spent most of the money they raised in the final weeks of the election as prior to election day it was expected to be a very close call and an interesting fact is that Juanita Perez Williams actually spent so much of her money raised that she only had nineteen dollars and seven cents left over in the end for a little bit of comparison almost every other candidate had almost over a thousand dollars left over of that money. So Gabrielle, that's quite a bit of money. What are some of the reasons that this year was the most expensive compared to past campaigns? Yeah, well, this was due to the fact that the race was so close and that there were a large number of candidates in the field. At one point, there were over oh, there were exactly 10 candidates. Six of those were Democrats. And even in the primary stages, it was a close rate. Joe Nicoletti actually received the endorsement from the Democratic Party before Juanita Perez-Williams went on to secure the nomination. And then in the days leading up to the election, Ben Walsh and Juanita Perez-Williams were neck and neck. So both of their um, campaigns put out a lot of money in the final push. Gabrielle, I know some candidates like Joe Nicoletti have run for mayor multiple times. Do you think we will see runs in the future from any of these candidates? Yes, well, Nicoletti was actually in the 1993 um, campaign, which actually was previously the most expensive in the city's history. And it's likely that you could see more campaigns from him. And I actually spoke to Juanita Perez-Williams about what her plans for the future are. Um, you know what, I really enjoyed my campaign. I have no regrets, uh, and I really feel like there's more to come. Um, but right now, I'm just going to kind of reflect on uh, where we were, and uh, maybe in the months to come, I'll talk about other campaigns I'm interested in. Thanks, guys. Back to you. Thanks, Gabrielle. That varsity pizza that SU students love will be seeing some competition next year. Lilia Wood has the reactions from local businesses, owners, local business owners, and students. A new pizza parlor will open for business on Marshall Street next year. Blaze Pizza will be located in the Marshall Department's retail space. Two Syracuse graduates are the real estate investors for the Marshall development that includes seven floors of student apartments with nearly 17,000 square feet of retail space underneath. Blaze Pizza is the first announced business for the space. Students who are living in the Marshall next year, like Emily Sawyer, are looking forward to the different choices and convenience that Blaze Pizza will bring. I'm excited to try a new pizza place because I've been to most of the restaurants on Marshall Street, so I'm interested for something new and I love pizza. So. <laughs> Blaze Pizza was founded in 2012 in California, and now they have over 200 restaurants in 32 states and Canada. One of the chain's earliest investors is LeBron James, who currently owns 17 Blaze Pizza's franchises. 
Syracuse University is no stranger to pizzerias. Blaze Pizza will be the third pizzeria opening up on Marshall Street, competing with Varsity Pizza and Ducropolis. Local pizzerias like nearby Varsity Pizza do not think the pizza chain can provide the same atmosphere as an independent parlor. We're a family-owned business. We have been since 1926. They're a chain. We have regulars that have been coming here since before I worked here and, and you know they come every Thursday night at the exact same time and you know chain, chain company places don't get that kind of loyalty and, and familiarity. It's this mindset that has kept Varsity Pizza confident despite other pizzerias opening over the years. In a lot of places come and go we're not really all that worried about um, competition around here. While students can move into the Marshall as early as next fall, Blaze Pizza will be open in about a year. Lilia Wood, Citrus TV News. The Blaze Pizza on Marshall Street will be the chain's first central New York location. Syracuse University is offering new employee benefits in the new year in compliance with a new state law. Under the New York Paid Family Leave Law, Syracuse will provide paid leave for eligible staff members to help raise a new child, care for a family member with a serious health condition, or prepare for a family member's call to active military service. Those with questions can contact Human Resources directly or visit their website. The law will take effect January 1st. The mumps disease continues to spread at SU despite a booster vaccine offered last month. On Tuesday, the tally of confirmed cases grew to 51. 81 cases are listed as probable. All infected students had received the two required mump vaccinations. SU spokeswoman Sarah Scalisi said that currently the university is not seeing a spike in cases like it did in October. SU, SU students offered, got, were offered a third dose of the vaccine later that month in hopes of containing the disease. There's a little over 9,500 refugees in Syracuse. For them, one of the biggest struggles of coming to the United States is speaking English. Citrus TV reporter James Groh visited a few of the places that are helping refugees overcome the language barrier. Learning English is difficult. I'm sorry, I'm at work now, so maybe <laughs> you'll come later. So the city of Syracuse offers English conversation classes for adults at the Kinchin Library. Talk about uh, several uh, interesting topics uh, with uh, several friends, and uh, uh, I can learn about uh, uh, the grammar. The goal of the class is to teach a conversational level of English. So for much of the class, they just talk and work through sentences. I know you would like to watch the uh, the soccer game. And so far, the program has been successful. I feel uh, confidence. Uh, to talk with uh, English speakers. So while adults who want to learn English can come here to the Kinchin Library, students who struggle with English can come here to the White Branch Library. Students can get help from a group of volunteer tutors. Then they help us like write our essays. They even make us understand much better than we do in school. It's tough enough to learn a new language. It gets even trickier when you add school to the mix. Sometimes it's too hard. And for a bunch of non-native English speakers, you would think that the toughest subject is their English class. But actually, it's... Math, geometry, algebra. And the students came to the library naturally. They didn't respond to a certain program. Rather, the library found volunteers in a response to a growing after-school attendance. James Grow. Citrus TV News. Syracuse University also has an English Language Institute on its campus devoted to teaching English to its international students. New York is pledging millions of dollars to support services for sexual assault victims. Governor Cuomo said earlier today that the grants will support 55 state-approved anti-sexual assault crisis hotlines and prevention programs. Some of those programs include education in schools, college campuses, and communities. Well, Claudia, we had a nice surprise today as we got, we were treated to a little snow. We were, and we have our weatherman Jack Watson in studio with us to tell us a bit more. That's right, Connor and Claudia. There was some snow on campus today, but as you'll notice, there was, there was no major accumulations on campus. We are expecting uh, more of the same tonight. A low of 26 degrees, a gusty night at 15 miles per hour with the wind. A uh, chance for snow is 60%, but I wouldn't expect there to be too much snow on campus. Here's why. 
with as we can see with our future radar, uh, the areas of Watertown, just about an hour and 20 minutes up I-81, are going to be really majorly affected by this lake effect. So uh, regions directly east, as you can see here in Syracuse, we are relatively unaffected by the snow development up north. Our Friday forecast here, we're getting some sunshine tomorrow with a high of 33 degrees, uh, but pretty close to freezing, so I would recommend a jacket and a hat. But could we have some more snow coming soon later this weekend? I'll have the answer on my full forecast when Citrus TV News Live at 6 returns, guys. Coming up, a deadly school shooting in New Mexico. We have the latest information from the sheriff's office about the gunman and the victims. Plus, a change in power at General Electric will cause job cuts outside of the U.S. Find out who is at risk and why the new CEO thinks that this will be the right move for the company. Stay tuned. Are you good to drive? I'm fine. How many did you have? I should be fine. You should be? Go and step out of the vehicle for me. See ya, buddy. Good luck. So it turns out, buzz driving and drunk driving, they're the same thing. And it costs around $10,000. So not worth it. They said I have troll teeth. That my voice sounded like a possessed baby doll. That no one would ever love someone as stupid as me. That I was fat. Ugly. Disgusting. The effect of bullying is potent. We will no longer be the silent majority. Now, when you see online bullying, there's something you can do about it. We're gonna take action with the eye. I am a witness. I am a witness. I am a witness. I am a witness. I am a witness, and so are you. There's one if you see news happening on campus, in Syracuse, or across the nation, call the Citrus TV Newsroom, 315-443-1177, or tweet at Citrus TV News, your campus news leader. After facing several sexual harassment allegations, Democratic Senator Al Franken announces his resignation. The congressman spoke to the Senate earlier today and noted that some of the allegations against him are not true. Some of his accusers say that he forced himself upon them, groped them, and forcibly kissed them. His replacement is undecided as of right now. Franken also called out President Trump in his speech, reminding the public that the president was also accused of sexual assault, but retains his position in office. In the fact that I am leaving while a man who has bragged on tape about his history of sexual Assault sits in the Oval Office, and a man who has repeatedly preyed on young girls campaigns for the Senate with the, with the full support of his party. At least three people are dead after a gunman opened fire at a high school in New Mexico. The attack happened this morning around 9 a.m. at Aztec High School. The Sheriff's Office announced that the high school went into lockdown and students promptly evacuated. A spokesperson also stated that at least a dozen people were injured. Of the three fatalities, one was the shooter and the remaining were students. Authorities say there is no more threat to the community. General Electric is planning to cut 12,000 jobs in a new move to cut costs to save the power company. The cuts are expected to affect production and professional workers outside of the U.S. GE is also expected to reduce research spending and capital expenses. The cuts are part of efforts to cope with a flagging need for natural gas, electricity in the face of competition from renewable resources. A man denied a same-sex marriage license by a county clerk in 2015 returns, this time to challenge the clerk for her, new, for her seat next year. The clerk, Kim Davis, created controversy two years ago when she denied a marriage license to David Ermold. Her refusal came after the U.S. Supreme Court legalized same-sex marriage. She already announced her run for re-election and has held the position since 2014. If Vermold wins the seat, he would like to bring more professionalism to the office and make the voting process easier. U.S. Secretary of State Rex Tillerson says the State Department is convinced that the sonic incidents harming the health, 
harming the health of U.S. embassy workers in Cuba were targeted attacks. Doctors treating victims of the invisible attacks discovered brain abnormalities as they searched for clues to explain hearing, vision, balance, and memory damage. Tillerson suggested that Cuba could have done more to prevent the attacks. The State Department says 24 U.S. diplomats are suffering with medical problems in the wake of the incident. From the Citrus TV Weather Center, this is SU's most accurate weather forecast. Despite the fact that we're in December, Southern California's coldest month today, the wildfires in Southern California continue to rage on. Right now, there are four major fire areas, and here's where they are. The Thomas Fire uh, near the Pacific Coast uh, is the most intense of the major fires. Take a look at this incredible footage of a building exploding in Ventura, California, part of the Thomas Wildfire, which CNN reports is now more than two times the size of Washington, D.C. And what's really intensifying these fires is the severe hurricane force wind. Purple wind, as it's called, means extreme winds. The California Department of Forestry and Fire Protection says this has never happened before. Winds are getting up to 80 miles per hour. That's too intense for firefighters to fight, according to the Cal Fire. The winds diminish the department's ability to fight fires from the air with helicopters and air tankers. You can see the intense black smoke uh, pouring over the affected regions of these fires are growing very quickly. CNN reports that the Thomas Fire has grown just th as 31,000 acres in just about nine hours. Speaker of the House Paul Ryan has words of reassurance for those affected from Capitol Hill. When you see all these areas being evacuated, it's very clear that many families are going to be piecing back their lives throughout the holiday season. So just to echo what the majority leader said yesterday, we are here to help uh, to all those firefighters who are out there running into these fires. We're grateful for you. We're praying for you. And tens of thousands of Californians are under evacuation orders as the blaze has destroyed nearly 200 homes, and that number is still increasing today. Some highways have been shut down, but that makes it even more difficult to evacuate victims of the fire. Citrus TV will keep track of the situation and update you when new details come forward. Overseas after President Trump declares Jerusalem as the capital of Israel. We'll tell you what demonstrators and world leaders are saying about the controversial decision. And another world leader comments on the Olympic Committee's recent ban. Find out what option Russian leader Vladimir Putin is offering those Olympians so they can still participate in the Games. We'll be right back. Taking care of a family member can lead to plenty of questions. Fortunately, there's a place to get the answers for them and for you. Find articles, tips, and tools from experts and others who have been in your place. The Caregiving Resource Center at aarp.org slash caregiving. Well, Thomas, you've got prediabetes. But with more exercise and a change in diet, it can be reversed. I've tried exercising. It, it just makes me hungry for bacon. I love bacon, too. And who really likes to exercise? Not me. <laughs> me neither. Nobody. I... <laughs> <laughs> so we're good? What? Oh, you still have prediabetes. Big time. Here's your check. Oh, you, you got it. You know, since I got rid of my car, I really enjoy walking. Okay. Got it. No. Getting pulled over for buzz driving could cost you around $10,000 in fines, legal fees, and increased insurance rates. Oh, you're home early. You live with your mom? That'll set your game back a few years. Buzzed, busted, and broke. Because buzz driving is drunk driving. If you see news happening on campus, in Syracuse, or across the nation, call the Citrus TV Newsroom, 315-443-1177 or tweet at Citrus TV News, your campus news leader. U.S. allies worldwide are condemning President Trump's decision to declare Jerusalem the capital of Israel. British Prime Minister Theresa May called Trump's move unhelpful for peace prospects, while Saudi Arabian officials said the decision is unjustified and irresponsible. Hundreds of Palestinians clashed with Israeli troops in the West Bank today while demonstrators in Gaza burned Posters of President Trump. Trump is now widely expected to begin the process of moving the U.S. Embassy from Tel Aviv to Jerusalem. 
Russian President Vladimir Putin announced Wednesday that he is running for a fourth term. Putin currently holds an 80% approval rating, virtually guaranteeing another six-year term in the Kremlin. Russia's main opposition leader, Alexei Navalnev, is barred from running because he was found guilty of embezzlement. President Putin has been in power since 1999. And the longtime Russian leader is responding to the Olympic Committee's ban on Russia in the 2018 Winter Olympics. Earlier this week, the International Olympic Committee announced that due to a doping incident from the previous Winter Olympics, Russian athletes can only compete if they are clean and participate as a neutral country. Some people expressed concern that Russia may boycott the event altogether. However, Putin announced that he is allowing Russians to compete as neutral athletes, but believes the ban is unfair punishment. More controversy for the Olympics, this time for the United States. U.S. Olympic skier Lindsey Vonn announced that although she represents the country, she does not want to represent President Trump at the Games. She also stated that she would not accept an invitation to the White House to meet the American leader. Vaughn last participated in the 2010 Winter Olympics in Vancouver, where she won a gold medal. And coming up on sports, Syracuse takes a breather tonight, but women's basketball absolutely dominated in the Dome last night. And tomorrow, women's ice hockey prepares for a doubleheader against rival Mercyhurst. Stay tuned. <clears throat> hey, Hard, what's this? That's my resignation letter. You're resigning. Why? Because you're constantly ignoring me. You're half as active as you used to be, and you get stuff like this. You've been putting me under a lot of pressure lately. That's why I'm ready to quit. I, I forgot. I'll, I'll do better. Please, don't quit on me. Okay, but remember, it's not what you say, it's what you do. Listen to your heart. Don't let it quit on you. Let's go for a walk. Uncontrolled high blood pressure could lead to a stroke, heart attack, or death. Get yours to a healthy range before it's too... Here we go. Here we go. We're gonna go out there in the rain. Here we go. All right, here we go. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. Okay, <laughs> <sighs> <sighs> Oh, yeah, yes. So much fun. Mwah. When I was in foster care, I never knew when I would have to move. So I always had my suitcase ready to go. Then one day, I was adopted. My new parents opened their hearts and home to me. My parents cook my favorite breakfast for me every morning. My parents take me on trips I never thought I would go on. They gave me a home and an even better reason to use that suitcase. My parents aren't perfect, but they're perfect for me. And now, your Citrus TV Sports Report. Welcome to your Citrus TV Sports Update. I'm Zach Lang. Women's basketball survived an overtime match against Stony Brook in their last game, preserving their perfect record. Fast forward to last night, Colgate came to the Cary Dome looking to end the Orange's winning streak. And there's the Syracuse women. They're getting ready to go, and go early they did. Tiana Mangakahia with a fast break layup in traffic between Colgate defenders as he would be up early 36 to 12. But fast forward to right before the half, Isis Young's going to drain this three-pointer. Syracuse is already going to be up 51 to 16 at the half, absolutely throttling Colgate. But Colgate trying to get something out of this game. Uh, Chelsea Corn's going to get the steal from Digna Stratmane, and Nia Ahart's going to stop, pull up, and hit that jumper. SU's still up 51 to 18. But in the fourth quarter, Miranda Drummond's look at that ball movement, hit the three-pointer, and the Orange. Uh, they're going to win this one 79-39, to and Coach Q, he was really impressed with the three-point shooting that you just saw. Well, it's huge. I mean, we're, we're moving the ball and getting open shots, and, and that's, the, that's the big thing for us to get open threes, and we're able to make one more pass, make an extra pass, and getting really good looks at the rim. And anytime we get good looks, we have good shoes, they, sh they should be able to make those shots, and they did that um, tonight. They responded f from last game, and I really challenged them just to come out and play hard get our tempo back, let's, let's run them off the three-point line and not give them open looks. And, and they did exactly what we asked them to do, so I'm just really happy with their, 
with their productivity and their effort. Women's ice hockey looks to put the puck back in the net when they take on Mercyhurst in a two-day doubleheader. In their past two games, the ladies have been outscored 7 to nothing, including a couple of brawls. The first matchup starts tomorrow at 6 p.m. in Erie, Pennsylvania. You know that random town you pass between Buffalo and Chicago? I heard they have a good sheets there. And speaking of Buffalo, the Buffalo Bills head coach Sean McDermott says rookie Tredavious White cleared concussion, was cleared from concussion protocol earlier today. White was the target of a dirty hit from New England Patriots tight end Rob Gronkowski after White had intercepted a pass from opposing quarterback Tom Brady. Gronkowski apologized after the game for the hit, but was suspended one game by the NFL. He will serve that suspension on Monday night when the Patriots play the Miami Dolphins. And the New York Knicks enjoyed yet another victory at MSG, defeating the Memphis Grizzlies 99-88. to The game was tied at halftime, but the Knicks did not give up the lead throughout the final two quarters. Courtney Lee led the team with 24 points and shot 67% from three. Kristaps Porzingis added 18 points in his return to the starting lineup. The Knicks traveled to Chicago for their next matchup against the Bulls on Saturday. And tonight, the other Metropolitan team takes on the Oklahoma City Thunder in Mexico City. The Brooklyn Nets are coming off a 1-1 one one record in two straight games against the Atlanta Hawks. The struggling Thunder will be without All-Star Paul George and former Syracuse Orange star Jeremy Grant. Tip-off from Mexico City Arena is slated for 10 p.m. Eastern, and the game can be viewed on YES. And the Nets may be away from the office, but are still making moves. Sources say former number three overall pick Jaleel Okafor is on his way to Brooklyn. The 76ers are trading him in a package that also includes guard Nick Stauskas and a second round pick. In return, the Nets are sending Trevor Booker to Philadelphia to join the process. Thanks, Zach. Citrus TV will be right back. Don't go away. Maybe he's really focused. Maybe he likes spinning the wheels. Maybe he just loves trucks. Preoccupation with objects is one early sign of autism. Learn the others today. When they test you, stand firm and move only when you hear the seatbelt click that says they're buckled in for the drive. Never give up till they buckle up. This is the story of a boy who didn't talk for a long time. The boy liked things to always be the same. Any changes would scare and upset him. The unknown was an unfriendly place. The boy was very sensitive to lights and sounds. So he built secret hiding places where they couldn't get in. The boy didn't like looking people in the eye. He wasn't trying to be mean, it just made him feel uncomfortable. Sometimes he would flap his arms again and again. One day, I found out I have something called autism. My family got me help. Slowly, I found my voice and learned all the ways I could live with it better. Early intervention can make a lifetime of difference. Learn the signs at AutismSpeaks.org. Five-day forecast shows us two straight sunny days, 34 and 37 the high on both of those days. But Sunday and Monday are our biggest chances for snow, an 80% chance on Sunday, and Monday a chance for some afternoon snow as well. Thank you, Jack, and thank you everyone for watching our last show of the semester. I just want to give a huge thanks to our amazing executive producer, Taylor Lang, and the rest of that amazing crew that kept the show going. Cannot agree more. This is my first time uh, anchoring for Citrus TV News this semester, and uh, having you as my co-anchor has been, you know, great. You've been incredibly welcoming, and Taylor, you've done an incredible job. So I know that we'll, you're going abroad next semester, or you know, to New York. So we'll all miss you. I'll miss you guys a ton, and I'll watch every night. Don't worry, Monday through Friday. So thank you guys so much. I'm Claudia Balafato, and I'm Connor White. Good night. <laughs>